smell money. I smell a lot of money. Very expensive place here. Plaza del Duque. <clears throat> never actually been here. And the reason why I've never been here is because I've never had the money to buy from these shops for since my twenties actually. I had a lot of money in my twenties. Lost it. It's fine, you learn. I thought I'd come and have a quick look round and see. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going in the shops. I'm not that pretentious. But I just wanted to have a quick look and see and walk through and see actually what all the fuss was about. I can't stand these shops anymore. I do think it is pretentious. But there's a lot of money here. Guess Emporio Mani, Jimmy Chu, Versace, Prada, Gucci, Ray-Ban, Polo, Lacoste, Oatly, to name but a few. A few million round here, like incredible the graphics man look at that that's the future that is the future i suppose if you're into that sort of thing that is i used, i thought i used to be oh, isn't that interesting look at this is that the same close look at this see that watch there and how much that is look at that lucky lucky man <laughs> you know how much it is? Have they got it in the window? No, they don't have... Uh... They don't have Hublet in the window. They've got a Rolex. They've got a Rolex shop. Get them from the Lucky Lucky Man as well, can't you? I'm trying to get to the beach, actually. I've just cut through. And hopefully I can find the beach somewhere. I've come down from the no, I need to go that way. And there's a Hublet window. Let's have a look, see if my watch is there. It's there, but no prices on it. No prices on it. A lot of money around here. I want to talk to you today. Taxi coming through it quick, so let go. Talk to you today about the future. I know, we did the past the other week, we'll talk about the future. When I say the future, I think you guys on YouTube, if you're 50 plus, you should be commending yourselves. Do you know what it is? I used to call it with, um, I used to call it with people. I used to say, look, are you can, when I used to go and teach people on computers at work and stuff, I said, look, are you computer literate or are you computer idiot? Are you computer super? It's like what level you're at. I think you guys on YouTube are far more advanced than people who don't use it. Because, especially if you're commenting, because it means that you've actually got the computer knowledge to um, log in, get a YouTube account, um, sign in, navigate yourself around a, um, a massive website, most probably with these, and then um, be able to comment at your own free will on it, which is uh, really quite clever and quite commendable. However, let's look at the next level, because I want to tell you about this. I found this out on a vlog that I did back in the UK when it was in Pensha and it was snowing and I stayed with um, Shelley's son, Calvin. And he spoke to me about a website and he said, have you ever heard of Chat GPT? I'm like, never heard of it. He said, it's the first ever computer program that is actually AI, artificial intelligence. So it's driven by AI. I'm like, what do you mean? This will show you. So he logged into ChatGPT. Now, as always, you've got to log into these things. Go and take a look at it. It's free, the, the, the older versions are free. So you can go and take a look into it. Some money around here, like some houses. Um, but you can log into it. For, it takes a couple of minutes just to get yourself in. It's already get, uh, boasting 100 million users at the moment. Um, they're actually now to a level called ChatGPT4. So they've obviously had uh, three, three, sorry, 3.53, 2.52. So now it's like that's how much advanced it's become. And basically what it is, is there's a, a search box, as always, like a Google thing. You can type anything into that and artificial intelligence will actually get the answer for you. Isn't that weird? Isn't that absolutely bizarre? So artificial intelligence will find it. Now, when I found, when I got told about it a couple of months back, I saw it and I thought it was phenomenal and then it just like came up, went out of my brain and I just carried on with normal day-to-day -day stuff. But 
the world that I'm in at the moment on the net and stuff, ChatGPT keeps coming back and back and back. And I keep hearing more and more and more about it. And it's, it's artificial intelligence. It's like people are sort of embracing it. Some people are afraid of it. Some people are astounded by it. And the thing about it is anybody can try it. You can go and try it and go on the web now. You can go and search ChatGPT, log yourself in. I think ChatGPT4, which is the most advanced one, you now actually have to pay to use it. And it's like $20 a month or something if you want to use it. But what I'm saying is it's like the other ones, the older versions, ChatGPT3s, 2.5s. I think they're still on there and they're free to use. And you can go and have a go. Now, a couple of things I did, this is the idiocy of it, is you get, um, you get a search box which you can put anything in. And you sit in front of it and your mind goes blank. Completely and utterly blank. So I did one thing. I said, uh, write me a funny story regarding Rolo, the rescue dog, and Bella, the bitch, living in Tenerife. No more than 250 words. And it's dead with that instantly. But you can, you can go, write me a computer program um, that shows you how to play ping pong. And it will do. Write me, you can anything, literally anything that you want, you can write in that, you can write in that box and it'll, uh, it'll do it. Now... The thing about it is, it's not fantastic yet, but it's the start of something. It's the start of something that in like 20 years down the line, it's gonna be phenomenal how far this thing goes. To a point around, for instance, at the moment, I watched a YouTube, uh, there's, a, there's a famous YouTuber called Casey, Casey Neistat. He's got 12 million followers. I follow him, um, I watch what he does. I think he's a phenomenal filmmaker, I think he's brilliant. And his latest vlog, which was uh, came out last night, was um, ChatGPT wrote this video. And he put into ChatGPT, write me a video about Casey Neistat, and it did. And then from there, he went out and filmed it. He said, write me a script. And he went out and filmed it. It's not the best, but it's, it's very interesting and very funny. For a start, how it knows Casey Neistat, who it knows, you know, he knows who he is. And then it can actually create, he knows where he's from, it trawls all the data from across the across the net. Um, that's why it uses its um, reference tools from, let's say. It's across the net. And it's, uh, it's quite a powerful thing. Now, again, today I've been out on a run. I'm still trying to catch up with Calvin on our uh, running challenge. And I had the headphones in. And I'm listening to somebody talking about this, about ChatGPT. And um, somebody came, he came up with it, he said, did you hear the story about the guy who used ChatGPT to save his dog? He went, no, what do you mean? He said, well, this guy had a dog, the dog was dying, he took it to the vets. The vet couldn't find out what was wrong with it, but clearly the dog was dying, he was in sort of massive distress. So he went back with the blood results that he had, went to ChatGPT, put the information into ChatGPT, turns out that the dog became anemic after a bite because it's a certain type of dog that gets uh, you get bitten by something and it'll become anemic and that's actually what it is that was actually killing the dog he went back to the vets that gave the vets the results the vet treated it and the dog's now survived and the dog's absolutely fine he said and that's the power of what can you know at the moment a basic chat gpt can do he says but then take that further let's say you go for an mri scan now the results of the mri scan get looked at just with two human eyes and a human brain it says later on down the line artificial intelligence will be able to pick out the minutest detail of an mri scan that humans can't pick up let's say and be able to um, help modern medicine at a level that human doctors will never be able to do sure somebody you said you reckon we'll still need surgeons he says, but would we then need doctors? Because in doctors, we're basing our information off the human brain, human eyes. He says, but with artificial intelligence, would we then actually need the doctors? This is the direction it's gonna go. 100% believe it. And it's available now for normal people like me and you to go on and have a little play on it and see what it comes up with. It's incredible, isn't it? It's absolutely incredible. He also then talks about, well, what happens when technology starts combining with biology? And so what do you mean about that? So we'll think about, before we start that, look at that view. Look at that. It's 
nice, isn't it? Think about now, we've got phones. Obviously, a phone is a natural part of our body. You know, everybody has phones. It's, it's already integrating, really. It vibrates in your pocket, which is then against your leg, so it's biology vibrating. He said, but what was interesting was that in years gone by, oh, I see this guy all the time. There's um, an invisible man. <laughs> There's, you know, these street artists, I've got no change to give it, so I feel a bit guilty showing it, actually. If we, if we pick it up on the camera as you go past, you'll see him. But he's actually the invisible man. He's very cleverly done. He said in years gone by, can you imagine years ago, clothes became an invention. Clothes were an invention. At one point, really, people realised that there was um, the use of clothes would actually benefit mankind. People could then go to places and survive, down to duck down, woolen undergarments, and they can go and live, and the human race can survive in places that you could never survive without them. And then clothes became a thing. So in essence, clothes were an invention. It says, now, that's going to be a time, maybe also with technology, that it also might go that way as well. Now, that's when they're saying inserting technology into your body itself, and so you're combining the two, which sounds a bit weird. It says, but think about it. What happens if, by doing that, you get a cure for Alzheimer's? You'd then take it, wouldn't you? Or any incurable disease. You'd then take it, which is a bit... When you think about it that way, you go, yes, most probably I would, actually. Most probably I would. So, the direction the world's going is at a rapid pace. I like to think that I'm already on it, on top of it, or with it. But in essence, we're nowhere near it because the, the speed that it's going is just phenomenal. It's ridiculously phenomenal. And the final thing I wanted to leave it with, you know, I'm just seeing, sorry, I'm just seeing if I can get out of this way. That's why I'm a bit uh, hesitant when I'm talking. I'm trying to get back over to the other side where my bike is. I'm have to turn around. I don't think I can get out this way. Ah, it's a bit of a walk, in it? It's a walk. You know my love of languages. I love speaking it. One of the languages I always wanted to do was um, I always wanted to learn computer code. But the problem with computer code now is it's so far advanced to start right back at the beginning. It's just massive compared to where it was 30 years ago. So I think I must probably miss the boat, I think. But then that's also, I thought to myself in the olden days, that's the days of like people, you know, driving cars. Years ago, right at the start of the beginning of the car uh, inventions, when it first started, if you wanted to drive a car, you'd most have to know how to build the car. Once you build the car, then you can go and drive it. Technology got so far advanced eventually that you didn't need the knowledge to build the car. You just became a driver. Lewis Hamilton does not know how to build a car, but he can drive it. Now that's the same as then computer language, computer code. You don't necessarily now need to know how to code back to zero, that, that's a, you know, right to the beginning. When there's that many platforms now that are out there that you then just need to know how to use it. So the question is, where do you now jump in? Do you jump in at the beginning, right at the zero, learn to build the car, or do you jump in where you can start using it? I don't know, because that it just feels you've been left, I feel like I've been left behind with it. I don't know. It's a weird one. Listen, rambling today. Sorry about the rambles. Um, go and take, check it out. Chat GPT. Just stick it in Google now. If you already know about it, stick in the comments below what you think, if you know about it, because uh, and see if you've used it. Because I sat in front of it with most probably the most modern, advanced system I've ever sat in front of in my life. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I think I need to go back. I think I need to go back. I can't get out this way, so I'm going to go back. Um, I didn't know what to say. Um, I got stuck. I might actually put down on the next one. Write me a vlog for Just Rick. I don't think it knows who Just Rick is, but you never know. I need to say thank you very much for the 2,300 people that have now subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for supporting it. When you know, you know, you know. If you've not already subscribed, there's still a majority of people that watch this that don't subscribe. If you want to give us a quick uh, subscription, subscribe. It's free. Uh, you'll see it down at the bottom here somewhere on the screens or just off out of the screen below it if you're on a smartphone. Uh, you can unsubscribe whenever you like. But if you want to do it, if you're new and you fancy doing it, it helps the channel tremendously. It helps pushing the algorithm out there. I just want to say thanks a lot. So that's Monday for you. I'm going to go and try and find my bike now. I'm lost. I told you I don't come around this area very often. So uh, see you on the next one. As always, you know what to do.